Nickel electroplating. This is not complicated. You need a container. Some type of small power supply. This is an old phone charger. Anything that pumps out less than about one amp will do. If you can't find a power supply, a couple of batteries will work. Vinegar. Just plain old white vinegar. Salt. Like you sprinkle on steak. And a piece of whatever metal you want to plate with. Start with nickel. But where do I get the nickel from? eBay. Search for nickel anode. Add vinegar to container. You can mix in about a tablespoon of salt now. I'm going to do it in a second, so I can show current before and after salting. Make the nickel into two pieces of nickel. Hang each piece over the edge of the container. Connect the power supply to each piece of nickel. Positive to one piece, negative to the other. That's it. Now you're making nickel electrolyte. It's really that easy. But what about the salt? The only reason we add salt is to increase the conductivity of the liquid. Watch the multimeter as I add salt. If you don't know the polarity of your power supply yet, the side with all the bubbles coming off it will be negative. You'll need to know that for later. When the solution turns green, you have successfully made a nickel electrolyte. That should take about two hours depending on the power supply. Assuming you don't wreck it, you only need to make the solution once. It'll last forever in a sealed container. Bit, bit. What about other metals? Let's try copper. Same deal. Let it run until the solution turns blue. And what about the zinc? I have no idea. Let's find out. Excuse the giant zinc anodes. I already had these. And excuse the lunchbox, I ran out of jars. Zinc doesn't make the solution change colour. Just leave the power on for a couple of hours and assume it's working. While the three electrolytes are brewing, let's get some test pieces ready. To get a successful plate, your parts need to be immaculately clean and grease free. If you're dealing with rusty parts, you'll have to go through a whole process to get them back to good clean metal. But for these little test pieces, a squirt of brake clean will do. If water beads on the part, it won't plate. Now wire up your part on some copper wire. Now this next part is optional. I always dunk my parts in hydrochloric acid immediately prior to plating. This will etch the part and act as a final clean. This is just hydrochloric acid from the hardware store. Mix about 50-50 water and acid into a natural Greek yogurt container. At a 50-50 mix, I leave my parts in for about one minute. Okay, the electrolytes should be ready, and we're all set to go. Let's get plating. This is what your nickel electrolyte should look like after an hour or two of brewing. It should be a definite green, like delicious watery Gatorade. It will get more concentrated as you use it, so don't worry too much about how green it looks to start with. Get some tap water ready. This is just for rinsing the acid off the parts, 
so you don't mess up the electrolyte. Hang one of the pieces of nickel over the container. This is the anode. Dangle the part into the electrolyte, as far away from the anode as practical. Connect negative to your part. Connect positive to the nickel anode. And power up. You should see bubbles on the part. Congratulations, you are electroplating. If you're just messing around, plating stuff for fun, about 20 minutes should do it. Make sure to turn the part around a couple of times during the process so that it plates evenly. If you're planning on using the parts for anything, you probably want to increase the plating time to about 45 minutes. And increase that even more for the first few plates until the solution builds up concentration. Now, copper. Check out the nice blue colour. Isn't science amazing? Copper won't plate directly to steel, but it will plate to nickel. So anything steel has to be nickel plated first. And from there, it's exactly the same process as for nickel. And zinc. I don't actually know if this will work or not. Let's find out. Well, it's bubbling, so if there is zinc in the electrolyte, it'll be plating. You can see it's turning a dull grey, which is zinc. So yep, no problem. Okay, I think they're all done. Let's check out the results. The first square is the steel control, unplated. And here's the nickel plated part. Unless you stuff something up, nickel always turns out good. You'll be happy. And for reference, here's a chuck key I made and plated in the same nickel setup. Next, zinc. The zinc turned out fine as well. That dull grey is what you're going to get without using brighteners. The dull side is as plated. I gave the other side a quick polish, just by hand with some autosole. And finally, copper. This is a little smutty. The copper I was using is just copper sheet from the hobby store. Not necessarily pure. But it turned out okay. However, I obviously didn't plate it for long enough, because I almost polished through the copper on the other side. But you get the idea. So that's it. I haven't shown you the ultimate plating setup. The point of this video is just to show that there is no barrier to trying this out for yourself. So give it a try, it's fun, and you're only risking ruining some vinegar.